Hello, hello, beautiful soul. I am so excited to share with you the five keys to maximizing your effing productivity. Emphasis is on the F because each of the five keys begin with the letter F. And I'm doing this because so many of you asked for it. You have asked me time and time again, year after year, how do I do it all? Because I work with so many um, creative, multi-passionate, highly sensitive empaths and light workers amongst us, we tend to have a lot of ideas and energy coming at us. And for some of us, it's really hard to get into that sweet spot of productivity. And I have mastered that. Um, it took a lot of trial and error. But what I want to share with you are the five F's to maximizing your productivity. And beyond productivity, this is going to maximize your sense of fulfillment. Because for me, I found out that that was much more important than just getting stuff done or knocking things off of a to-do list. Like so many people, I um, had gotten to a point in my life where my career was rocking, I was on TV, I had a big business. I was doing all of these quote unquote amazing things according to the world and yet I was not feeling any sense of fulfillment or happiness. And it took a little <laughs> bit of time and hitting rock bottom and kind of like saying no to everything to finally get to a place where I am enjoying peaceful productivity and the things that I'm accomplishing now are totally in alignment with what I believe is my destiny like my soul's purpose on the planet. And that's what I want you to experience. I want you to feel that sense of fulfillment. And yes, getting ish done is part of that. And so what I'd like to do just to start off is I'd like to ask you to close your eyes if you can, if you're not driving or chopping vegetables or holding a small child, close your eyes and imagine, imagine that I could wave a magic wand and ding, it's one year from now. We're in the future. And as your future self, imagine that you have had the best year of your life. If you were going to sit back and tell me, oh, Andrea, this is what I did. This is what I have. This is the kind of person I've been being and living as. What would that look like? Looking at all the various areas of your life, from your finances, your book, books, your business, your relationship with your family, relationship with your beloved, the relationship with yourself, your, your own soul's journey. What would life look like a year from now if you had the best year of your life? Now, the first F of maximizing your effing productivity is focus. And I don't want you focused on anybody else's goals. I didn't say nothing about resolutions. Because resolutions just mean you've been coerced or you finally resolved to do something. Uh -uh. I want you to be focused on a vision of you living at your best and in alignment with your values. Like what do you value in life? What really is important to you? Because if you really wanted to have a life of fulfillment, it has to mean that you're living and utilizing your skills to the best of your ability in a way that's meaningful to you. And that means it's in alignment with your values. Do you value freedom? Do you value creativity? Do you value justice? Do you value beauty? Whatever those values are, for me, it's integrity, authenticity. It is creativity and freedom. As long as you're making sure that any of the objectives or goals that you set for yourself are in alignment with this ultimate vision, you're going to be setting yourself up to live a life of fulfillment, not achieving some goals just because somebody else said they were worthwhile. So what do you value? If you were living at your best and we were celebrating one year from now, what would that look like? What would it feel like? Because that is the focus I want you to keep. We're focused on that vision. You expressing your strengths, talents, and abilities in alignment with your values so that you feel fulfilled or whatever other feelings that you've, you've listed, feeling joy, creativity, abundance, vitality. 
this has been a major shift for me, going from being a kind of aggressive do, do, do person in the early part of my adult life to really being about choosing um, consciously how I spend my time and with whom I spend my time. And so um, one of the first things that you can do to start to see what underlies your motivation is to do a review. So looking at the last 12 months, the last year of your life, write down everything that went well, everything that you accomplished, everything that you're kind of proud of or you would consider a success. Now, I don't like to do this because it feels icky, braggish, but some people in my tribe asked for this, so here you go. I made a list, I did my 2019 review, and I found out that there were seven events that I hosted. Six of those are my own events here in the south of France. And one of them was at 1440 with my dear friend, Karina Virginia, in California. So I did seven events. Um, I traveled 13 times um, to various countries. Um, the UK two or three times, um, Denmark two times, the USA two or three times, um, Iceland twice, and Dubai. That was my exotic trip of the year. Not that um, Iceland used to be my number one exotic place, but now I go there every year, so love you. But yeah. Anyway, and I also went to the Netherlands and Spain. So did all of those trips. I um, presented in Monte Carlo in French, um, a whole thing on conscious relationships, and um, also got to enjoy some plant medicine ceremonies, looking at psychedelics and how they release trauma. I got trained in neurofeedback. Um, it's just like so many things. And again, I'm not even going to tell you all of it. Um, appeared on multiple stages, didn't even count those up on all the other people's stages. Started with some amazing new um, global luminaries in my academy. Um, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months out of the year, I went up to my Buddhist retreat center here in France, up in the mountains. And out of all of those things, you're going to write down the things that you consider a success. Whatever those things are, write down the things that you actually accomplished. Maybe you saved a thousand bucks. You launched a, a new website. Maybe you did finally get your book done. Maybe you landed five new clients. Whatever it is, you spent more time with your beloved. You know, you improved your relationship with your kids. Write down the things that you consider to be a success. And then next to them, write down how. How and why did that work? How did you make that happen? Because we've got to get to understand what are the secrets to your success. For many of us, we just kind of like muster up the courage to like get stuff done in a reactionary kind of way. Like, oh, this just has to get done. But what would life look like if you were to be in a little more of a peaceful flow, being in that flow state instead of reactionary adrenaline, get stuff done and then you feel depleted? What if you were able to work with a state of flow and fulfillment and actually feel good and then rest like I did going up to the mountains and having my, my spiritual retreats to refill and refuel? Well, that didn't happen by accident. It happened by me consciously understanding what were my secrets to success. So you're going to write down what are the lessons that you've learned from the things that you did well. And then, of course, similarly, I want you to make a list of the things that didn't quite go how you wanted them to. The shortcomings. We're not going to call them failures. They're just things that didn't quite go well. And then you're going to also write down what are the lessons that you learned from that. Like what, what lessons um, or excuses do you tell yourself about why you weren't able to get those things done or why they didn't go as planned. And this isn't about blame. This is about taking accountability and understanding how you limit yourself. Like ask, how do I limit myself? Do I spend too much time on social media? Do I not have confidence and I just give up too soon? Do I not ask for help? Do I have a problem saying no and setting clear boundaries? Like really look at what are the excuses or justifications for why things didn't go well. 
so that you can start to understand how you limit yourself and then learn the effing lesson. Learn the lesson. <laughs> because in this new year, abundance and resilience are like my keywords for this year. And so the only way that we can do that is to start really understanding what are the underlying assumptions that govern how we show up in life. In other words, if you think of life as a game, you know, in any game you play, like playing the game of chess, you know that the queen can move in certain directions and take certain moves that the knight can't, for example. That those rules of play are clear and you kind of know if you needed to go look up the rules, you could. Well, what I'm asking you to do is rather than being unconscious in the way you live your life is bringing more awareness and consciousness in so that you can say, well, what are, what are the underlying assumptions and paradigms for how I'm showing up so that you can check the ones that don't fit anymore or that are limiting you and change them. And, and what we're getting at is something that we call a paradigm. The paradigm for how you show up in life is, is what it includes your mindset and the assumptions that you make about yourself, about what's possible in the world, about other people. Um, and all of those assumptions and the mindset and that paradigm and those excuses, all of that is what drives your behavior. All of that's what dr drives your um, actions and your attitude. All of those underlying assumptions are what drive your speech, what you say, including the self-talk, your whole vocabulary. You know, so how you be and do and show up in the world is governed by the underlying paradigm. And so <clears throat> there's a, I'll give you a link if you'd like to create your own empowerment mantra. Um, we call it a personal success mantra, where you go through an exercise um, step by step to arrive at what are those paradigms. Um, and of course, if you'd like to see a longer version of this, I hosted a two and a half hour workshop taking you through the 10 questions of a system called Best Year Yet that leads you into diamond life design and leads you into looking at the past year, what didn't work and what did work and, and creating your major focus. <clears throat>